Now, the received opinion stated by all experts for more than a century is that there is no sex differences. There is no sex difference in intelligence. And here you see a quotation from Diane Halpern, possibly the leading authority on this subject, from her book, the fourth edition of her book. She has devoted some 30 years of her life to studying this subject. It's now in its fourth edition, a 450 plus page book. And here you'll see this statement. Females and males score identically on IQ tests. That is a very strong statement and is, in my opinion, undoubtedly wrong. <laughs> now, as I say, and as you will see in the summary, in the, uh, uh, this document in circulated, where I give a number of quotations from eminent people who all, over the decades, who've all said there's no sex difference in intelligence. And they're people who we all respect. Uh, Raymond Cattell, Hans Eysenck, Nathan Brody in his excellent book on intelligence, and many others. And I believe this. When everyone in a, well, a field takes the same view, you tend to think they do the they're very likely right and don't question it. Until I, th I, so I believed this until 1992, in which uh, David Ankeny and Phil Rushman both published papers independently, in which they demonstrated that men have larger brains than women, even when. They're, 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 this is controlled for body size. And this uh, set me thinking about this question because it's well known that brain size is positively associated with intelligence. Uh, and uh, it appeared to me that uh, because men have larger brains than women, and because uh, it is also well known that uh, brain size is associated with, positively with intelligence, it would seem to follow that men should have higher intelligence than women. Uh, so, uh, I pondered this problem for few months. Uh, but eventually I came up with what I call the developmental theory, which is to the effect that it is true that there is no difference between males and females on intelligence up to the age of 15 or 16. But when you look at the data on adults, you do in fact find that men have a higher IQ than women. And I intended to quantify this uh, through the uh, calculation that I show there, uh, showing that males should have a higher IQ than women of approximately four IQ points. And in the, I published this in Personality and Individual Differences in 1994 and presented quite a lot of data to show that among adults it is correct that men do have higher IQ than women by around four IQ points. Now hardly anyone took any notice of this for a number of years with one exception and that was Nick, Nick McIntosh uh, who uh, two years later in 96 published a paper saying this is all nonsense uh, Take the Raven's progressive matrices. This is an excellent test of reasoning ability. It's also an excellent test of G. And there's no sex difference on the Raven's progressive matrices. Uh, however, he did not distinguish between children and adults. 
So I thought, well, I'd better have a look at all this. So I recruited Paul Irving to look at it with me, and we published a meta-analysis of sex differences on Raymond Professor's matrices in the journal Intelligence in, 19, uh, in 2004, in which we showed that there is no difference on the set of rated matrices up to the age of 16, but then males begin to show an advantage reaching uh, in five IQ points among adults. The next person to come into this uh, question was Helmut Nybold, who published two papers, papers in 2003, and 2005, and he produced new data confirming my position. Now, let's show the next slide. I, I, I got you as far as how. Oh, oh, thank no. you. So I put all this aside in, in 2005 and worked on uh, race differences and national differences in intelligence. Um, but I've, in the last few months, I've revived this, my interest in this question. And I thought I'd look first at the Vexler tests. And the Vexler tests uh, appear to me to be a good source of data. They are very well respected and the most widely used tests you know, throughout the world. They uh, measure a good range of, 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 of cognitive abilities, verbal, spatial, memory, um, general knowledge, uh, perceptual and so forth. And uh, many studies have been done on well-drawn representative samples of the population. So uh, let's have a look at these, I thought to myself. And first of all, I, I'll see what people have said about the Bexler tests. And here we have some comments on the Bexler tests. So here are our friend Diane Halpin again, you know, she says, the, the waste, uh, which the adult intelligence scale, of course, the waste full scale IQ does not show sex differences. And here she is again, the American Waste 4, that's the last of the uh, standardizations in the United States. The American Waste 4 standardization overall IQ score does not show sex differences. And here we have Heyer and his friends. This is Richard Heyer, the uh, current editor of the journal. What do they say? Comparisons of general intelligence assessed with standard measures like the waste show essentially, essentially no, differences between men and women. So these are all the experts. However, as Heyer said in his first address this morning, Expert opinion is not a substitute for examining the data. How true. <laughs> so I thought, uh, so I'll, I'll have a look at the data on this. And uh, I collected, let's show the next slide. Uh, okay, we can skip Anderson, can we? Oh, well, Anderson is another of these fellows who say there's no difference <laughs> on the Vexler or in any other test come to that. Uh, when they have the same IQs. Okay. Right. Let's have a look at the next one here. So I've collected uh, 32 studies of the WISC, that's the children's one, of course, for 16, for 6 to 16 year olds. I've collected 32 studies of this, in which boys have an advantage of 2.85 IQ points. So maybe I was wrong in saying there's no sex difference up to the age of 15. Maybe boys do have a high IQ at that range, in, 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 over that age range. And I've also collected 32 studies of the adult scale. And uh, men obtained a higher full scale of IQ, the median advantage being 3.6 IQ points. Notice that, or, uh, well, let's just have a look at the, uh, let's just have a look in detail at the, the four American standardization samples of the waste. And here are the differences. <coughs> here are the years in which these were carried out. And uh, 
Men have a high IQ advantage. In all these four standardization samples. You see in the last one, in the race four, men have a higher IQ of 2.25 IQ points. Isn't it strange? I showed you in a previous slide that Diane Halpern says in her textbook, there's no sex difference in the American standardization of the race four. And this is the difference. And it, all these differences are statistically significant. How does she know this? I wrote to Pearsons, who published this stuff, and said, would you please send me the sex differences on the fourth standard I take? They, they said, fine, here they are. Here they are. Um, so then I said to them, have you disclosed this data, these data, to anyone else? They said, you, I, no, no, we haven't, no. It's the first time anyone's asked to see this. I must have made this up. Mm -hmm. What other conclusion can we draw? I don't know. Now, this 3 IQ, the 3.6 IQ, point difference on these Lexler tests or, the, or in the, on the American standardization is about 2.2 or something. They're a little bit less than the four IQ points that I predicted in my initial stud, uh, study. But let us note that uh, people who constructed the test and, and other tests as well have done their best to eliminate sex differences. So if they find any items on which either sex does better than the other, they try to get rid of them. But they don't have totally succeeded. They've probably succeeded in reducing it by an IQ point, perhaps. But it seems it's quite hard to eliminate the sex differences on some of these items. And they have uh, Let's look at the next slide. And uh, right, here we are. Uh, yes. Now, uh, let me look now at verbal and spatial ability. Now, some people have taken the view that you could think of intellig general intelligence as composed of the average of verbal and spatial abilities. And two people who have done this in the last year are Colin Cooper and uh, this young man up in uh, Edinburgh. We're working with Ian Deary, Stuart Ritchie. Uh, can you read what? Can you read on this? Can you read yeah. this at the back? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, you see what they say there. They say essentially, well, women do better on verbal abilities, <coughs> men do better on spatial abilities, and they balance each other out. So there's no difference in general intelligence if we define it in this way. That's what they say. But of course, this is untrue. In fact, there's virtually no difference on verbal, between the sexes on verbal abilities. We know this from the meta-analysis carried out by Janet Hyde and Marcia Lim. In fact, uh, they found that if you all were listed all the studies, and if you weight the results by sample size, men score slightly higher than women by 0.6 of an IQ point. But if you look at the meta-analysis of sex differences in spatial abilities by Marcia Lynn and Anne Peterson, well, there's a massive difference of 7.5 IQ points on spatial abilities. So if you average the two, you get a male IQ advantage of four IQ points. <coughs> How can it be that Colin Cooper, the senior lecturer at Queen's University, written by Dr. Hilders, and Stuart Ritchie, how, how can they write books stating, producing these statements, which anyone with a cursory knowledge of this field knows are wrong, and quite seriously wrong? I have someone will answer this question for us. 
Let us continue. And we'll now we'll have a look at the question of sex differences in G. Now, let's have a look at that. Uh, I was going to look at gender inequality. Let me go back to. That's all I have on that one. Uh, you don't have anything on gender inequality. No, no. Uh, that's okay. it yet to come. Oh, okay, yeah, gender. Okay, we're now <coughs> gender inequality in the glass ceiling. Right. Okay. Can you all read the stuff on it? Let me. Uh, yes, we can at the back and nodding. Right. Okay. Well, gender inequality is the fact <coughs> that there are many more men at the top of virtually every profession, except one. Get the oldest. Uh, many more men. <laughs> Is this gender inequality? Why should this be? If, if men and women have the same intelligence, why should this be? Well, this was discussed by Steve Chechi, as he likes to call himself. Cece, sorry. Cece, he calls himself Cece, doesn't he? Steve Cece and Wendy Williams discussed this in their book. Well, why are there so few women in science? Published about eight years or so ago. They, they assembled what they say in their introduction. Fifteen top researchers who are going to discuss this problem. And we're going to present all points of view. Curious enough, however, we didn't find anyone who would present the point of view that perhaps this could be before because men have a higher average IQ than women, which would explain, <coughs> explain some of the, this. Uh, deplorable fact that there are so many more men than women at the top of virtually every profession. <clears throat> now, Helmut has very kindly reminded us in his recent excellent paper in intelligence that when you have even a, a moderately small difference between two populations in a mean, like a four IQ point difference, at the end of the distribution, you get produce quite a large difference of proportions of people over high IQ points. And Helmut in this paper presented new data showing that a 3.9 IQ point difference, advantage for males over females. And he pointed out that if you have a nine a 3.9 IQ point advantage, then at an IQ of 130 plus you get five men to one woman. And he presented data from a number of countries, so this is just about the proportion of men to women that you find at the top of large public companies. And it's also about the proportion of men to women that you find at the top of most professions in academia, in the law, in medicine, and so forth. So, uh, the preferred explanation of all these 15 experts, or most of them, was that the reason there aren't so many men and women at the top of these organizations is the glass ceiling. <coughs> this is an invisible ceiling, but it's made of glass, and it's erected by men towards the top of occupations to prevent women going through it. It filters out women. It prevents women. Men can go through it, but not at the glass ceiling. But uh, as uh, Helmut was good enough to remind us in his paper, we don't really need this uh, construct. Uh, we need to take Occam's razor to this construct and eliminate it. I'm referring, as you probably know, to William of Ockham, the English scholar of the 13th century, <coughs> who proposed the principle hypothetical entities should not be unnecessarily postulated. He got into a lot of trouble because some people thought he was referring to God. Mm -hmm. But he managed to avoid being burnt at the stake. 
So I think we can take Occam's razor to this construct of the glass ceiling, and it can be explained quite satisfactorily by the substantially higher proportion of men with IQs above 130. And of course, as you go further out still along the IQ continuum, up to an IQ of say 145, the proportion of men to women gets even greater. It rises to around 10 to 1. So this begins to be help us to understand why there are so many more men at that time, high IQ, high IQ level, say about Nobel Prize winners or perhaps uh, chess grandmasters, than there are women. And now I've come to the slide of sex differences in G. We G. have five minutes left. Oh, right. Well, G. Now, here's an interesting thing. <coughs> Ian Halpin's book, which uh, the fourth edition that I showed you at the beginning, of 450 plus pages. Have a look at the index and look up G. You won't find anything. Now, isn't that rather strange? If you could write a, you could spend your life writing books. You could arrive at the fourth edition on sex differences in, in intelligence and make no mention of G. But this, this is the case. There's no mention of what, whether there might be a sex difference in G. Yet this is a question which a number of people have written on. Jensen, who analyzed the whiskar using the uh, principal factor as a, uh, to uh, assess G, and he produced a 2.4 IQ point difference in favor of boys, which is boys, of course, not uh, adults. And he um, attacked the question again in his 1998 book, this is the G factor, and he presented five data sets on this issue, of which I give the two extremes here. And he concluded, well, it's all very conflicting, as you can see. Um, some studies show, show males have higher G, some studies show uh, females have higher G. That's the second one. The third, the third one in the row. Uh, uh, minor, minus 7.9 means you that females have higher G of by 7.9 IQ points. The other one, the second in the table, shows males have a higher IQ by 5.5 IQ points. Well, it's all a mess, he says. So we can't really, uh, we can't make any judgment uh, about this. All we can say is all very conflicting. Um, uh, so uh, there you go. When you get such very different, different, different results from these two, uh, methods of calculating the sex difference, there must be something wrong somewhere in the method. And what is wrong, I think, is that the nature of the, of the G depends on the nature of the tests which are used from which G is extracted. Now, females do better on perceptual speed, as shown by the coding tests in the Bechtler tests. And the second, the last study there, in which females do much better, this is a battery in which there were a number of perceptual speed tests, which produced a heavily weighted perceptual speed G, which is why females did better on it. Um, uh, the, uh, the one in which males did better was a, a battery from which, in which there were more tests on which men performed better than women. I've got another slide up now because I'm pushing you on speed. Oh, well, here, are, here are subsequent attacks on this question of G. Uh, Helmut, in, uh, uh, these are their uh, various methods have been used, various tests have been used, various methods have been used, and uh, these are results here. They all show male advantages in G. Um, uh, one of the most sophisticated. Uh, Paul Irving's study on an analysis of the American Waste 4 data in which uh, 
Do we show that on the... Uh, yes, we've we yes. just shown that, so I'm now on to your final quotes. Here. Well, here, so, so well, here you see uh, trying to review the literature from this. Mm -hmm. So here we have some final quotations from all these experts. Yeah, here we are. Butterworth. Can you read them all there? Yes, sir. Yeah, no, when no, I let you read them. And we have men and women have equal cognitive capacity. Elizabeth speak. No difference in general intelligence. Melissa Hines. General intelligence does not differ between men and women. Richard Heyer. No difference between males and females. Overall, the sex differences are equally smart. Diane Halpin again. <laughs> and finally, Nick McIntosh. The two sentences do not differ consistently in average IQ. Uh, as Heine said, expert opinion cannot necessarily be relied upon. Thank you very much.